Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go. This is Valley News Live at 5. I think the big thing, and we see it right now, is unity and just opening our minds and to each perspective. I mean, obviously, there's a lot of police officers out here, and I love seeing it, and we'll talk about it time and time again. It's going to take middle ground and compassion to see both sides of the story. Thousands turned out this afternoon for a peaceful rally at Island Park in Fargo. It was a day to hear passionate speeches from Black Lives Matter activists, area mayors, and those who simply want to see Fargo Moorhead unite after the riots of last weekend. Valley News Team's crime and safety reporter Bailey Hurley joins us live from Fargo with more on the rally. Bailey. Andrea, it's quiet now, but it was packed with people today. Thousands were here as organizers got up on the gazebo stage, full MC equipment and everything, so everybody could hear much different from last weekend. Uh, but everybody gathered here today as organizers talked about what still needs to change in the Fargo-Moorhead area when it comes to equality. Now, organizers called this event the One Fargo event, calling this a celebration of the impact their voices have already had since last Saturday's march, as well as a celebration of George Floyd's life and the fact that all four officers accused in his death are now jailed and charged. However, I spoke with one man today and he says that he doesn't really agree. He says that we shouldn't be celebrating anything yet as there's still a lot of work to be done. I've lost 57 friends to gun violence. Let's talk about those nights. Let's talk about that pain. Are you listening? See, I'm not blaming you all, but you told me I was a criminal before I knew what jail was. You told me I was less than before I could add or subtract. Let's talk about those days at my friend's house hearing, why is this in my house? Let's talk about my first best friend having to stop hanging out with me in the fifth grade because hanging out with black kids will lead him to trouble. Now, Fargo police did have a strong presence here today, but just like organizers asked, they left the riot gear behind. However, if you are in the downtown area tonight, you will still notice a large police presence. But as of right now, that is just as a uh, just as a precaution. Uh, however, what before this event let out today, organizers pleaded with those in attendance. Do not get involved in any violent acts tonight. They say if you know anybody who has those motives to please stop them as no matter what the skin color of the rioters or any purpose perpetrators that do anything tonight, the flack will still fall back on the black community, and that is not anything that they need right now. Of course, if anything does unfold, we will keep you updated for now. Reporting live in downtown Fargo, Bailey Hurley, Valley News Live. All right, thanks, Bailey, for that live report. Out of an abundance of caution, several businesses in Fargo and Moorhead closed today. Moorhead police say they received several messages from businesses with concerns. The city of Moorhead says each property owner must use their own decision-making in preparing their property. The city advises businesses to remove items around their business, their property that could be used to cause damage or harm. It's one of those weekends. We'll have some nice weather at times, but also our team will be watching for severe weather. Let's get the latest on two days of first alert weather from Hutch. Hey, Hutch. The Valley News Live first alert storm team has issued a weather alert day. Thanks so much, Andrea. As we head into our weekend, we want to make sure everyone is alert that we're going to have some storms. Not all of us will see storms, and it's not going to be all the time all weekend long. But if storms form and move towards your area, we want you to be aware you should have a plan in place. We'll have some risks we'll go over. For tonight, though, southern Stutzman County has a few sprinkles that extend all the way down in toward that Traverse County area uh, and all the way out to the west. This is not severe. This is not what we're expecting for tonight, but hit and miss sprinkles. Temperatures still 80 in Fargo, 79 Fergus Falls. Look at Lake of the Woods. Some cooler 60s there for your evening. Blue skies on the Fargo Sky Cam as we head through our evening. I think we'll stay quiet, and for the most part, I think Fargo stays dry this evening. Enjoy the quiet weather while we can 9 18 the time of sunset grand forks gorgeous evening weather as well temperatures slipping into the 60s 9 23 the time of your setting sun we'll have details on saturday's timing and location of storms and sunday's timing and locations of storms and you're here in just a few moments all right thanks hutch
Authorities in Moorhead say an assault involving two people is now being ruled a homicide. Police have identified the victim in yesterday's incident as Richard Stephan of Fargo. Moorhead Police and the Minnesota Bureau of Criminal Investigations continue looking into the case. They have identified people of interest, but they're not able to provide more details at this time. They do say there is no threat to the public. One person is recovering following a crash that shut down part of a busy road in the South Metro. It happened around noon along 52nd Avenue South by Frank's Lounge in Fargo. No further information is being released at this time. State health officials are confirming 40 new cases of COVID-19 with five additional deaths linked to the virus in North Dakota. One death was in Grand Forks County while the other four were in Cass County. There have now been 71 deaths in North Dakota. 30 people are currently in the hospital. 2,745 people have tested positive for COVID-19, but the active case count in the state is 432. In Minnesota, health officials are reporting 33 more deaths, bringing the death toll to 1,148. 922 of them happened in a long-term care facility. 712 new cases are being reported, bringing the active cases to 3,968. 21,864 people have recovered. As demonstrators nationwide continue to call for justice, the city of Minneapolis has voted on the first changes to its policing policies in the wake of George Floyd's death. Skylar Henry reports from Minneapolis. Was turning over to you. Minneapolis City Council time. members held a virtual emergency meeting Friday, voting to ban the use of chokeholds by the city's police force. Bystanding officers are also now required to intervene regardless of tenure or rank. We have to be on the precipice of change and that there are reforms that are just generations past due. The temporary measures come after now fired officer Derek Chauvin kneeled on the neck of George Floyd until he stopped breathing. Three other former officers are also charged with aiding and abetting. We're here because George is dead. And we're here because his family has called on us to act bravely and urgently. In Buffalo, New York, two officers are suspended after video showed them shoving a 75-year-old protester to the ground during a rally in Floyd's honor. I just spoke with uh, Mr. Gugino on the phone, who is that gentleman, uh, who thankfully is alive. But you see that video and it disturbs uh, your basic sense of decency and humanity. Many of the people here at the site of where George Floyd died hope his death brings about more changes between law enforcement and the communities they serve. Having an interaction with the police officers is not really about the ticket. It's not about the fine. It's about the repercussions of be being in custody and are we going to be able to see another day. So Minneapolis said its goodbyes to Floyd Thursday. Now residents at his birthplace of Rayford, North Carolina, will get a chance to pay their respects during a public viewing Saturday. Floyd's body will then be taken to Houston, where he grew up, for a final farewell on Tuesday. Skyler Henry, CBS News, Minneapolis. Lawyers for two of the now-fired Minneapolis police officers charged in George Floyd's death say their clients had only been on the job for four days, although according to their records, they became full officers in December. Former officer Chauvin is expected to make his first court appearance on Monday. The governor of Minnesota was touring areas damaged during recent riots. Governor Tim Walz walked around downtown Minneapolis with a large group observing buildings that were completely burned to the ground and other damage to the surrounding area. The damage was caused by some people who broke from peaceful protests and began rioting and looting. The protests started after George Floyd was killed by a Minneapolis police officer who knelt on his neck and back for more than eight minutes. It's one thing to look at this damage and, and to see it, you see a burned out building, but that's not the story. It's 25 years of heart and soul that was poured into it. And then this sense of community that goes around it. The biggest thing you hear from this is the resiliency of people. The first thing they said, no one got hurt. They got their employees out. And the second thing they say is, I want to rebuild and I want to stay here. Governor Walls went on to say he is saddened by the situation and the community will overcome it. Washington, D.C. has renamed a street leading to the White House, Black Lives Matter Plaza. That message is now painted in yellow on a portion of 16th Street in front of the White House. The mayor of D.C. said she wants to call attention to making sure our nation is, is more fair and just. 
A green street sign reading Black Lives Matter Plaza has been affixed to a lamp post outside St. John's Church. That's where federal forces used munitions and pepper spray on Monday to clear peaceful protesters so President Trump could take a photo outside the church holding a Bible. Still ahead on Valley News Live at 5, less social distancing, more cases of COVID-19. What health officials say the public needs to remember for this fall. And we had cooler temperatures today in northern Minnesota where mid-60s were the peak. Temperatures 70s and low 80s down in the Southern Valley. Some wild weather this weekend, but also some good weather. We'll spell it all out coming up right after this.